Hey everybody, this is Robot here from Vespa Motorsport and ScooterWest.com. For all things Vespa, check us out on the web, ScooterWest.com. So today I'm going to show you how to add the USB capability to the outside of your scooter. And if you have a 2015 or newer model Vespa GTS 300, whether it's the latest HPE from 2020 or later, or the previous generation, the 2015 through 2019, uh, they do include a slower USB charging jack that's located inside the glove box. But oftentimes, you may want to add a RAM mount or a quad lock mount to perch your uh, mobile phone right on your mirror, you know, for instance, for using navigation for long term. So it's nice to have your mobile phone hooked up to a constant power so uh, your battery doesn't drain and in fact charges. And I've found the built-in USB plug kind of charges at the slower rate. It does eventually charge the phone, especially if you don't have the display on, and that's located inside the glove box, and that's included with the scooter. And the intent is to put the, your mobile phone inside the glove box with the cord and charge up your phone and put it out of sight. So I know how connected everybody is nowadays with their mobile phones and how reliant everybody's become to having them, you know, for instance, everything from navigation to notifications or managing your music through a Bluetooth he headset. So you may want to have it within reach of your left hand. And of course, I recommend doing that safely, not while motoring down the highway or in stop and go traffic, preferably when you're stopped, but you could Ideally, you can mount your phone on the left mirror with a RAM mount. I have several videos of the various RAM mounts that we sell at Scooter West. But of course, you want to power your phone. And typically, all new phones are very power hungry and they support the newer standard of USB 3, um, USB C, and along with the Qualcomm Quick Charge, which is a much higher rate of charging. Um, you could charge a typical mobile phone. That's modern mobile phone, like a half hour typically. I mean, there's a lot of variations, like can't keep track of all the phones out there. Um, so we have a new USB charging jack. And it's pretty much the same dimensions as the prior model. Part number PP9 for just the individual USB charger. And I've tested several different USB uh, chargers. I found this one to be the most compatible and work the best. And it has one added feature of a built-in voltmeter and a power switch that you can turn it on and off. Uh, also includes a weatherproof cap that's slightly transparent. So when you have it on, it shows your battery voltage, which kind of just gives you an indication of your charging voltage. Maybe you have other accessories on your scooter. Um, you can always take a glance at it and see what your charging voltage is. Uh, pretty neat feature, same price as the old USB um, plug that we've had for several years all the way back I think to the ET4 days that we had the USB jack. So PP9 is the USB jack just the individual part. Keep in mind we do sell the complete kits you can find them on scooterwest.com that are already uh, pre-drilled and pre-assembled and if you have a 2015 or later GTS and even the Primaveras and Sprints that have the built-in USB inside the glove box, you'll need part number PP11. And this is a plug-and-play connector harness to break out the 12 volts from the scooter harness to your USB jack. So let's get with the installation. It's really simple to install. Uh, only a couple things you got to do. Uh, the hardest part is you need to have a large step drill bit and I'll show you how that's done to make a clean hole to install the USB plug. So start by removing the left side, um, I call them the kneecap. The right side is your coolant level. If you're not aware, that's where you check the coolant level. That's where the coolant tank is. So you need a T25 Torx driver. The cap just removes pretty simply. And next, you're gonna find an access panel that needs to be cut out. This access panel has these cutouts in all these small tabs, and you, I just recommend having a sharp knife, and you'll be able to cut right through the, um, each of those tabs. And even just a couple bends will usually 
break through. You know, usually you just got to cut through about two or four of them. And at that point, you'll be able to get through. And it doesn't take much to remove this little access panel. The next step is you want to locate in here the connection for the USB. And it will be pretty much the same connectors right here. And the way you disconnect that connection is you pull up on this tab on the male connector. And of course my hands are kind of in the way. I'm not gonna, you don't necessarily need to remove the whole glove box, but you gotta get your hands on that tab and pull the connectors, separate them apart. And now you have them pulled apart. And then take your new harness, the PP11 harness, and it just intercepts that connection that's located right on the top of the glove box. And of course it's keyed, so it only goes one direction. There you go. And once they latch, and then you have a positive connection right there. And the connectors are already kind of secured by a clip back there. Um, it's pretty much all you have to do. Next, I recommend getting a step drill bit. Uh, you'll find these are pretty handy. You can get them at a home improvement store like a Home Depot or a Lowe's. Uh, alternatively, you can find them at Harbor Freight and they're decent quality, even though Harbor Freight isn't known for high quality products, um, but you can get like a three pack that's pretty decent quality. Obviously you want to get one that's a larger size. Uh, then you want to locate where you're going to put the USB jack. And most of the time you just put it right centered in this little um, e pad, uh, or you could put it to the right. And I kind of like it to the right, kind of tucks it in a little bit more. Um, just make sure that you end up within this little window right here. Or maybe, yeah, I'll put a little dot kind of where I want to start the drill. And you want to chuck the, the drill bit into a standard drill. Make sure you don't drill through your hands. You might do this on a wooden block. So just start slow so your drill bit doesn't walk, but this plastic's pretty soft and easy to drill through. And just make sure you don't over, if you drill it too large, it kind of... So, typically I just check it. Probably need to go one or two more steps. But there's probably other ways you can make a large round hole, uh, but the step drill bit is gonna be your easiest solution. So, pretty much thread that through. Looks like I need to go one more step for the threads. You can certainly uh, pull any of the little burrs off it. And the orient, this uh, USB plug, it says the word voltmeter and the little flap goes up. So just pretty much get that in there from the backside. Go ahead and spin. Doesn't matter which way that goes. And typically all you gotta do is hand tight. Just about as tight as you could get it by hand. Don't wanna put a wrench on that. Uh, the body of this USB uh, jack's all made out of uh, anodized aluminum. And then next we'll make the two connections. So the brass colored connection is gonna be your positive. There is a little plus near it. So just push the quick connects right onto it. And then the silver connection, which has a negative or a minus next to it, is your black connection. And at that point, go ahead and test it out, see if it all works. And it's got a nice power button, 12.8 volts, that's the float voltage of your battery. Um, which is kind of nice, the scooter's just sitting here idling without it running. 12.8 is a fully charged battery. Uh, if you just see about 12 volts, you know your battery's uh, kind of low. It's even dropping there. And if you start the scooter, and you'll see the charging voltage goes up. About 14.4, 14.5, that's about typical charging voltage. Um, and then if you turn the power off, uh, the, the jack just turns off, so you need to power it up each time you wanna use it. Uh, you could wire it to a constant voltage source. That would work as well. It includes two separate uh, USB 3.0 uh, jacks. You know, you can use the standard 
older USB things would maybe charge at the lower rate, but pretty much any modern um, newer smartphones gonna take advantage of the higher charge rate. So, you know, up to 20 watts, I think is what this will charge at on each separate port. So maybe you're running, you wanna charge two cell phones or you have a GoPro you wanna charge, it may come in handy. And at this point, pretty much just tuck the wiring in and put the cap back on and you're all set to go. So pretty much even just the standard USB jack, it will likely charge at the 10 watt rate. If you have a USB-C and your phone supports the quick charge three, it's gonna charge at up to 20 or even 30 watts at much faster rate. I hope you found that interesting. If you're looking for those two products, just search PP9 and PP11 on scooterwest.com. You find those two affordable parts that add a extra pair of USB fast charge ports to your Vespa. And you got the added benefit of a little voltmeter built in as well. Thanks again for watching. Robot here from Vespa Motorsport and Scooter West. Until next time.